naturalist pointed out to me that it is in fact a genet, a lesser spotted genet, pipe peeping at us from the top of a tree, which is very, very nice indeed. We left those leopards. We can definitely hear one of them feeding, and so we're not going to put lights on there, and hopefully they'll still be there in the morning. That would be great. So that probably is a small spotted genet. You get two kinds. You get the large spotted and small spotted. As far as I remember it, you know, it's been so long I've had to talk about but that I've had to talk about a genet. But I'm 90% sure that's a small spotted. And what we'll be doing is crawling along the branches very stealthily, looking for nesting birds, perhaps the odd reptile. And if it's very lucky, um, I guess a scorpion or two very Catholic diet and they look you can see it looks a little bit like a cat but it isn't a cat it's much more closely related to a mongoose and even more closely related to a civet and they're from the same family as the civet you had a lovely name the family's called the viviridae and although very beautiful they had the disconcerting habit of marking territory with a distinctly smelly anal gland here comes Byron Sarau. I can hear his vehicle. Baron. Baron, if you shine your light to where I am shining mine. I want him to just see if he can't get an angle on it. Baron, stop your car. If you shine your light where I am shining, you might catch the genet at a different angle from the one I've got it. Up top. In the tree. Oh, no. Maybe you were unsighted. I thought you might get it from where you were. Okay, sorry about that. You'll just have to sit there and wait. <laughs> Thank you. It's more than I managed to find myself. You heard that, did you, everybody? He says he managed to find me. Well, that's a relief. So let's just see if it comes out. I know this isn't a great shot. In fact, the camera that Byron's got would probably be much better for the sighting. Yeah, Byron, just there. That's yeah, up above where you're shining the light there. Yeah, you're on it. Just look around there. Your camera will be better than ours. Apparently the camera's on me. Thank you for that. I just want you to try and... I just want you to see if he doesn't come out because they're very special things and they look like cats but they're very long until you look closely at them they've got these long bodies with these incredibly thick long tails but much like the cats they are infinitely patient and you know they're still found in cities the last time I saw a genet before I moved back to the bush I saw one in a suburb called Dunkeld in Johannesburg and it is the middle of the urban jungle. Lots of trees around there, but you find these lesser spotted genets. They're highly variable and highly um, adaptable, able to live just about anywhere. We could try and sneak a bit closer. What do you think, Vim? I think it'll be cool. Okay, let me try and sneak a little bit closer, everyone. Brian, at least Byron, is looking into the top of the. You still see it, uh, VMP? I think that's the best we're going to do, everyone. It's cool, eh? there. Now you can see the detail on its face. You can see it's cat-like until you look very, very closely. Baron, if you ease down here with that camera, you might get a better view. If you just put a park right next to us. Let's get Byron in here with that other camera. And just, you might, because it looks so cat-like until you get up close. And then you can see it is not quite there. Oh, that's wonderful. You got it there? In the, you can see where that little fork is where I'm shining. The fork in the tree where I'm shining. Right, we'll let Byron try and find it there. That's wonderful. Just having a little snooze. Let me put this light on. There, I'm going to take the spotlight off. That's much better. Can you see it? 
Again, yes. Okay. Oh, that's wonderful. Look at it. And you can imagine how many creatures there must be lurking in the branches of all these trees here and how many we don't see. There you've got Byron's picture, which is obviously a little bit closer than ours. Brian on the super zoom. And you can see, I'm sure, from its face there, that although it looks cat-like, once you get in close, you can see those white marks, and it looks much more closely related almost to a raccoon, I suppose. I remember being struck by that the first time I saw a close-up of a genet thinking how uncat-like its face looks when you actually get a hard look at it. It's just gone to sleep there. That's so cool. Everyone, I think I've seen two of these maybe it's in the year that I've been here. We find their tracks all over the place, much like we do with the civets. But these chaps are all over the place. I can see, just opened its eyes to look at Byron and Brian. He's most impressed by them, of course. Fine fellows they are. And you can see its face, a long nose for smelling out, smelling out things. Now you can see our picture. And you can see it's very carefully just stuck itself into the fork of those two little trees. Or the one tree, two branches. Very sleepy. And it can hear somebody's having a drink not too far from here. I think a they're on safari and you can see the ears twitching, listening to the voices in the night, knowing that almost certainly they won't be able to spot it up here. Right, let's head across to Byron and get his impression on the state of affairs here. Byron, over to you. Thank, Thank you, James. Well spotted. I'm very impressed. And how beautiful is that just to see that little Janet hiding and resting in the in that tree. Look at those ears working. Very, very incredible, incredibly sensitive hearing. They can hear insects moving through the grass when they are looking for food. <laughs> Look at those beautiful big eyes. See, also because it is a nocturnal animal, it's got those large eyes. You can see a little bit of the reflection in its eyes. I don't want to shine directly on it because the bright light can affect the eyesight a little bit, but we're just off of it and it's very relaxed and settled in there nicely. This is wonderful. Beautiful, beautiful little animal. can hear scops owls calling in the distance. It's a great evening. The sunset was incredible. I hear a few of the viewers are saying it looks like a fox. It does almost to an extent, I suppose. That little face, that pointed nose. There you can see the markings on the body clearly. Look at those spots moving down the side of the body beautiful little animal and it, it you know, I suppose it does look fox like cat like it's <laughs> very got a few characteristics of those animals look at those beautiful markings on the tail you can see the stripes the black and the brown stripes over the tail there he goes. And they are nocturnal, so we possibly, or James possibly, found this just before it began to wake up. I'm not too sure if it was moving. James, was it moving? It was uh, mobile. It was mobile. So, possibly just resting a little bit and then we'll slowly start moving around a lot more and scavenging for food 
Not scavenging, foraging for food rather. <laughs> when James and I used to work together, when James used to uh, used to train me. Look at that, look at that. Oh, stretching there. Oh, you can see him beautifully now. They're very agile tree climbers. Look at that. It's losing a little bit in the thicket. As I was saying, when we were training, we used to try our best. It wasn't very difficult. We would often tease James about his training and try and make life difficult for him. He would ask us what animals ate, and our answer for everything was nuts, fruit, and mice. <laughs> exactly what and that's exactly what a genet eats, yes. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to leave that genet, let it carry on its